poverty can be absolutely crippling for a developing economy and it can actually promote a further lack of development in that economy. This video I want to understand why people might actually be in poverty, the different types of poverty that uh, can exist and how poverty can promote even more poverty and a further lack of development. So first of all, poverty, what do we mean by poverty? There are two types of poverty, relative poverty and absolute poverty. If somebody is living in absolute poverty, it means their income is below a certain threshold determined by the World Bank, let's say, determined by uh, a major development related organisation. So uh, a common definition is that if income is less than one dollar a day, people are living in absolute poverty. So all linked to a certain income threshold. If people are living in relative poverty, it means uh, someone's income is less than the average or a given average in an economy. So people in the UK may be living in relative poverty, but in other parts of the world that might actually be a luxurious kind of standard of living. So it's all relative to income in an economy, is relative poverty. Why might people be in poverty? Well, it can come down to a lack of opportunities for, for jobs in an economy, it can come down to lack of skills, it can come down to lack of education, it can just be bad luck, you know, born into a poor household, or born into a household where uh, parents are poor, where parents lack education themselves, where malnutrition is very high, where health standards are low. All these factors can lead to somebody suffering uh, poverty. What I want to focus on though, really heavily in this video, are the ideas of poverty cycles and how if somebody is in poverty with very, very low levels of income, how that can perpetuate and actually lead to even greater levels of poverty being suffered and how that can lead to a further barrier to development and a lack of development outcomes actually being achieved. There are two poverty cycles that you need to know. Um, one is the growth poverty cycle and the other is the development poverty cycle. Both, gives us, both give us very good understandings of why development will be restricted if poverty exists and both therefore can be used in any development related essay. Let's look at the growth poverty cycle. It all starts with low incomes, right? If you're, if you're in poverty, you must be having very low incomes. So low incomes in terms of growth will mean that there are going to be low levels of savings. We know that a determinant of savings is the level of income, so that, that can well happen. But as well as that, it's not just low incomes, it's a fact that there are no financial institutions potentially available in developing countries for people to save their money, even if they have some level of income. Um, there is no education as to how that money can be saved, etc. So low incomes can lead to low levels of savings. Without, many, without much saving in the economy, there can't be much investment taking place. And without much investment taking place, that's going to mean that uh, economic growth is limited, because investment is a key driver of growth. It's a, a key part of the aggregate demand equation. So you cut off investment, you cut off growth, actual growth and potential growth. And if there is no growth again, that's going to lead to more and more uh, problems in terms of lower incomes. So that's the growth poverty cycle, how low incomes can perpetuate and go all the way around the cycle and come back to low incomes again. There is also the development poverty cycle, which we're going to consider as well. So let's look at that. And again, the development poverty cycle stems from low incomes. Okay, so development poverty cycle, it starts with low incomes. And with low incomes, it means that citizens in an economy cannot afford education and healthcare. So low levels of education and health. Again, in developing countries where it's very hard for the government to fund the provision of education and health in its entirety, the private sector may have a heavy role in allocating resources to education and health. And what that will mean is that you know, people have to pay their education and health at the point of consumption. Some people may not be able to afford that, and if you have low incomes, you certainly will not be able to afford decent standards of health and education. If that's the case, then there are going to be low levels of human capital in the economy. Low levels of human capital, very simply, uh, lack of skills. The workers out there in the economy, people in the economy, lack the skills to actually gain jobs. And if there are low levels of human capital, if people do find jobs, there is going to be low productivity. 
and low productivity is a major limit, it's a major problem of earning higher incomes. As long as your productivity is low, you're going to find it very hard to increase your income. So what it means with low productivity is that we come back to lower incomes and the cycle starts again. So this is the developed uh, poverty cycle, which again, feel free to use in an essay. What we're trying to say though is poverty is disastrous. Right? Low incomes are horrible and what it can do is just promote more and more poverty and more and more low incomes. So breaking these poverty cycles is fundamental. Government policies aimed at uh, dealing with the issues of low incomes, dealing with some of the other issues in these cycles is fundamental in getting people out of poverty and promoting development. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.